episode six. I'm Sean. I'm Chris. We're doing it together. We yeah. just watched the show. It was so bad. Yeah. I mean, it was it was the best one we've watched. Uh, it was episode six, Man With My Face. Sean, it was only the best because you were here. Oh, thank you. Suffering with me. Yeah. It wasn't because of the really bad enchiladas? No. No. So, full disclosure, this is this is Logie cast because we're full of fucking enchiladas and truffle. Oh, God. <laughs> so full. I'm actually kind of headachy on that full. <laughs> We ate too much food. Yeah. And we watched Altered Carbon. Yeah. And it, uh, it wasn't good. Oh, and I had a... Um, <clears throat> announcement? <clears throat> no, no. Okay. Nothing so grand. Okay. I had a realization. Yeah. Um, so in the last episode, I was complaining about how um, Bancroft uh, going leper petting made no sense. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I realized that it does. How does it make sense? Well, friends. Okay. The point of that scene was to demonstrate... His lack of fear of physical contagion. Right. Because when the Vatch cons him later, it will be using the fear of mental contagion as a lever. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With the thing. Yeah, with the thing. With the thing, which the we, thing won't, we, we, won't, we won't talk about because it's it's an interesting plot device. Yeah, I guess. So the this episode, this grand old, grand old flag, this, yep. uh, opens with the Vatch taking Ortega to... No, that's not what it opens with. It opens with a flash forward. Oh, yeah, you're right. A flash forward to the end of the episode, which we'll get to later. Yeah. Uh, and then it goes to the, uh, the oh, look, Blade Runner scene, mm. where they're in flying cars. They're in flying cars. And he, well, flying car, and he's rushing her to the hospital. Yes, in which we are treated to a thinly veiled critique of America's current healthcare system. Yeah. In which Ortega is told by the people at the desk, well, I'm sorry, uh, plebeian, but you're going to have to die. Well, I think it was more. I'm sorry, Spanish person. No, it, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't just. It wasn't just. It wasn't just the health. The healthcare. It was also. Oh, you're definitely poor because you're not white. No, no, she's poor because they scanned her credit with a thumbprint. Yeah, Don't. her thumb, which happens to be Spanish. <laughs> uh, you hear about Pauline? She came down with a Spanish thumb. <laughs> and then a white heterosexual male spits on the counter and gets her the credit she needs the show fucking writes itself we can aspire to <laughs> fucking anyway yeah okay next scene uh, so, uh, Otelia gets a robot arm which is pretty sick I think we can all agree but she's mad about it for some reason oh I mean you'd be mad too if you went to sleep without a robot arm and woke up, woke up with a robot arm you've described Christmas <laughs> You've described literally my f my my ideal Christmas. Waking up with robot body parts. Oh, Santa, you listened. <laughs> What'd you do with the spares? I ate them. You <laughs> say, meanwhile, next door. Santa, you listened. Ah, <laughs> uh, the year cannibal Chris got his wish. <laughs> Bit manky, but I'll wait too. <laughs> I can freeze freeze the rest. Stop dying. Sorry. Stop dying. <coughs> oh, it's from all the laughing and truffle. I was dissecting enchiladas for most of this episode, so I don't think I absorbed as much as I could have. Maybe that's why we enjoyed it more than we normally do, because we were eating together, together, Chris. Yes, together. And also, as we, a we, family, we were also cracking jokes the whole time. Yeah, yeah. This I think the show is more entertaining to watch with um, a, a person. A person. <laughs> Rather than alone with a Google document open, writing down all the discrepancies. Oh, this is crap. This is crap. You use a Google Doc? Well, what do you use? Notepad++. That's stupid. That's what? not backed up to the cloud. Could be if I put it in a Google Drive folder. Oh, well, isn't that just sounds like Google Docs with extra steps? <laughs> isn't Google Docs just Notepad with extra steps? I'm pretty sure a Google Docs was one of the um, devices in that Rick and Morty episode. Oh, it was a Google Box. Oh, yeah. And a flugel crank. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what happens next? Um, oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we got they, that. They do a, a cutaway to a different scene where... Um, well, two other scenes. One where Poe is continually rehabil rehabilitating the crazy girl who got raped in an alley. And... Um, she got murdered to death by... People. By bad, bad Badness. Badness. It's implied to be Bancroft. I don't really know what we're doing no, at this point. No, the bloke thinks it's Bancroft and then um, the Vatch says, no, it's not. He wasn't there. Yeah. He didn't do that because Bancroft replaces the things he destroys. Ah, of course. Because he's rich and generous. Well, not generous, but he's rich. Yeah. He's like, sure, I don't care, whatever. He's crazy rich. Yeah. Um, and then on top of that, they also have a bit where 
the best actor in the entire fucking show. Um, A.K.A. Beardy McScally. Yes. Or Tattoo McBeardy. I forget what I called him. A.K.A. Listen Spanish to... Grandma. <laughs> yeah. Let's listen to a previous episode and remember what I called that guy. And yeah. Then, and then dub that in here. Uh, Spy of Jerusalem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's close. <laughs> um, who is now Demi the Twin. Uh, he goes and has a secret meeting with another meth, uh, Hemingway. Um, Who's around for who, reasons. Who employs the Ghost Walker. Lung. Yes. We have, we have now discovered Creepy McInvisible's name face. Um, and through the cunning use of uh, ties in another scene, you get to see that Tanaka works for him. I don't think the fact that they have the same tie knot means they're it's exa- connected. Then why did I notice it, Chris? Look, I'm not qualified to diagnose you, so I'm not going to try. <laughs> I don't have autism. My mother had me test- tested. Testament? Tested. <laughs> Shut up. I didn't say anything. Um, what else happens in this episode? You staggered into that pit all on your own. Uh, okay, so after that scene, um, uh, Tanaka shows up in the hospital where... Uh, where, uh, where he's wearing the same tie as Hemingway. Yeah, yeah of course. Yes, yes. There, there you go. Go to your happy place. Yep. Where, uh, and there are 84 flowers in that <laughs> <laughs> Where the Vatch is comforting Ortega and she's getting mad because she has a robo arm. For no oh, reason. we forgot that uh, Lizzie's dad fucks up the Poe's restorative therapy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. By getting mad at a machine. Yep. Which is rarely a productive... Does he rage against it? Yes, he does. I'll see myself out of my own Yes, heart. yes. Meanwhile, with the Renegades of Funk... At the Legion of Doom. No. Okay. What happens next? I've forgotten. Oh, uh, t- it turns out Tanaka's dirty. Yep. But only kind of dirty? Yeah, he's like the... Uh, he's like, I'll take money and look the other way, but I won't do anything bad other than look the other way. Which makes me kind of bad. He's the dirty cop with a heart of dirt. Yep. Uh, full of what? Where are we going now? Prison um, Prison... <laughs> <laughs> I'm keeping him a prison wallet. Uh, Deadpool 2 is a good movie. Yeah. You should all go see it. It's much better than Old Carbon. So is uh, Ant-Man and Wasp. We saw that today. It was quite good. Oh, shit, yeah. Ant-Man and Wasp is a rollicking good time. Mm-hmm. It features a lot of what I've taken to calling shrink nanigans. Oh, yeah. yeah yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Quite a lot of shrink nanigans. It, it was very good. Go and see it. Go and see, If you haven't already, go and see it. Ah, this is that classic comedy bronze. Sean exhorting people who are not here to go do something. Yeah. Chris, go and see it again. All right. It's not too far to walk. I, I could do that. Uh, I think they've started or already started the final session of the day. They'll hold it for me. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That sounds right. Um, what happens next? Uh, gets in the way of Poe doing psych things, allowing a tiny woman to beat him up. Tanaka spills that uh, he has a way of contacting the guy who's bribing him. Yep. By going and... to a shitty VR cafe. Yep. And having shitty VR chats. And so the Vatch and newly augmented Ortega, mm-hmm. Ortega. Oh yeah, Ortega throws uh, Tanaka around yeah. in a way that would require a lot more than a bionic arm, but it doesn't matter. And way more recovery time after that surgery. Yeah. Well, so how does she just suddenly know how to use the arm? Like, well, most people have an arm, sure. Yeah, but if you go through horrific injury mm. and they've rejiggered your entire arm, just because they've hooked up all the the nerves doesn't mean you know how to use it. Yeah, that's future medicine. Rehabilitation. Okay, well, if you actually want the in-universe fucking explanation, they probably ran her through a VR training simulation. But she doesn't know that she's got a robot arm when she wakes up. It happened between scenes. <laughs> <laughs> then they er- no, then they erased the memory with drugs. <laughs> drugs are good for your kids. Future drugs. Future drugs. Um, uh, oh, and then we get to see that thing that you were really excited about. Oh, well, we didn't really get to see it. So, uh, we saw the uh, aftermath uh, of it. So it turns out that Tanaka is the guy who followed them, which is interesting. Oh, we, uh, we skipped a step. Um, oh, oh, yeah. So they they meet up in VR with Hemingway, uh, who we saw earlier in the episode talking to Dimmy. And while this is going on, Dimmy has been chased away by Long from Hemingway because uh, he was going to kill him because he's obviously wrapping something up. I don't know. He, uh, Dimmy is obsessed with killing the Vatch because the Vatch killed his clone brother. Yeah. Who he loved like a clone brother. Yes. He's going to murder him, but Long is like, ah, I'm going to have to dead you. So uh, Dimmy... Uh, to- Runs into a tattoo parlor and opens up a chair and pulls out a little computer from the chair. Yep. And says, he... and says, they're on to me, get me out. Yeah. Because he has stored it here for just this purpose. Yeah. Writing. And he somehow um, broadcasts his consciousness out of his sleeve. He needle casts it. He does. To a nearby location. Or however, however he does it. And then he, then he is a dead. Yeah. And then he is a dead. And so Dimmy has escaped and is somewhere. We'll find out where later. 
Oh, wait, no, exactly. We know exactly where he goes. He goes yeah. to the fucking fight drone with. Uh... Well, no, it's not just that. He then shows up at the VR cafe in the sleeve. No, he doesn't. Yeah, he shows up in the Vatch's sleeve. With the, he's got the, he's the one who has oh, the thingy. Oh, yeah, 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 The sure. spinny thing that sure. you like. Yeah, that's true. What's it called again? So the spinny thingy is a monofilament whip. Right. Which is a, a weapon just iconic to the cyberpunk genre. You don't get to see it used, you just get to see its existence implied. Does it make a noise? I mean, yeah. It's got a weight on one end, so that part goes through air and makes a, makes a noise. Yeah. You know when you tie a, a ruler to a bit of string, you go, boom, boom, boom. You mean a bull roarer? I do mean a bull roarer, yes. yes. I love that they're called bull roarers. Yes. Did you read that book with the bull roarer in primary school? It's about a... a, a that sounds really familiar. It's about a girl on a, on a farm. Yeah. She's got to scare the magpies away. With so the, she uses a bull roarer. bull roarer. Yeah. I had a bull roarer when I was a little girl. Do tell. <laughs> I just did. All right. <laughs> Moving on. Um, uh, anyway, so where Demi goes to is the fight drone with Carnage. Yep. Where he gets sleeved into... Uh, None other than Vatch's sleeve. Vatch's sleeve. I don't know how they have that. It's probably a replica. Well, no, you saw it in a previous episode when he was walking through the fight train. Ah, uh, yeah, his sleeve uh, is like some kind of... Like super soldier thing, because they've, be- they've beefed it up, because they've used clone DNA from Harlan's world I th- to no, make that. I think they called it a... Do they call it the right hand of God's sleeve? Maybe. Because that's not... I mean, we're going back to the books now. It's not the kind of sleeve that old Vach... Vach- Vachmo, the saxophone player... <laughs> oh, yes, he's Vachmo now. <laughs> The trumpet player, sorry. Yes. That's not the kind of sleeve Vachmo had. No. Anyway, Dimmy links up with Carnage. Meanwhile, in VR... Uh, he uh, The Vach pretends to be Tanaka, goes and sees Hemingway... Oh, you, using his Envoy um, VR magic, which is real, and still and they're still using... Also, the VR cafe has him just plug himself into a wall at the bottom of a stairwell. I feel which like is, which a, is strobing. I feel like a cubicle is traditional. Yeah. So you don't get molested by random passers-by. Like even Ready Player Ma- One managed that. Like the book, not the mo- movie. I haven't seen the movie yet. You haven't seen the movie? No, I haven't seen the movie. Ready Player One was a surprisingly enjoyable film. Well, we talked about that in one of... I don't know if we talked about it in the podcast. We didn't. We'd, we'd, we'd long, long since discontinued the podcast by that point. Um, I read the book last year. Um, and... By the end of the book, I knew it would make a better movie because, uh, was it Ernest Klein? Yes, that is the perpetrator of yeah. Ready Player One. Yeah, Ernest Klein wouldn't be able to get his shit all over the film because Steven Spielberg would be like, no, it's all right, mate. You go sit in the corner and play with your own poo and, <laughs> and I'll clean this up, all right? Well, virtually all the problems of the book is that the internal, the protagonist is a shit heel yeah. who is just irredeemably bad and never gets any better. Are you ready for Ready Player Two? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and and his his internal monologue stains the entire experience. With that removed, things become a lot nicer mm. and more fun. Yeah, but also really stupid because it's a deeply stupid story. So the person they're speaking to, which we think I can't is stop farting. Oh, great, great! <laughs> Welcome to the fart drone. Hey, hey! You can't be like that. You've been farting this whole time too. Yeah, but my farts are charming. <laughs> well, put a hat on them and they'll be great. Is that what charming Just means? Send them out into the world. Please, sir, let me work for you. <laughs> I'm a hard-working fart. Yeah. <laughs> I go all day and I never quit. Well, yours would. So Tanaka, <laughs> or the, the, Vat, the Vachmo, yeah. Vachmo disguised as Tanaka, talks to Hemingway, who then recognises him and, and calls him Takeshi, which suggests that it was, in fact, Kawahara all along. Who's Kawahara? Good question. We'll find out soon. Meanwhile, uh, oh no, hang on. And then they go back upstairs and discover that all the people are very still because they have been decapitated. All of them. But their heads haven't come off They're yet. all just fucking sitting there. A room full of people with their heads about to fall off. But they don't fall off until a dramatically appropriate moment. Well, no, it's until they do like the 80s stumble and bump. Ah, uh, yes. And then all the heads come off. Yeah, just at once. Like, and they, they fucking domino into each other too. <laughs> and then the Vatch's sleeve throws a grenade at them and they wake up in the fight drum. Yes. Um, oh, hang on. We have skipped an entire scene. Uh, yes, we have. Okay, so moving back a bit. Um, they... oh, and it was and it was one of the two best calls I had of the night. Yeah, Sean was on fire. I, was. I, I wish you could have been there, but you couldn't. We, we, you could have, but we couldn't. Re- we, we didn't record because of that. So Vachmo and um, friend. Uh, what is his name? I can't remember. Mister Elliot. Elliot. I don't remember his first name. Anyway, Elliot. Lizzie's dad. Lizzie's dad. Liz, Papa Liz and Vachmo go yeah. to Isaac Bancroft's house. Now, you may remember at the end of the last episode, we determined that through 
some scheme that was never really explained, yeah. Isaac was going to replace his dad. Yep. Even though that couldn't possibly work for 50 different reasons, but moving on. Yeah. And he finds where he's hiding out uh, with his lover, and they beat the shit out of them, and the, the Vatchmo determines that he, he couldn't have possibly tried to replace his dad. Because he, because he doesn't feel as much pain as the Vatch. As the, he doesn't feel as much hatred for his father as the Vatch feels for his. Yeah. That's how he knows he didn't try and kill his dad. Pro tip, Vachmo's dad was a real piece of shit. Yeah. You see flashbacks to him beating his mum. Mm. Mm. And then... Oh, Bank- yeah. And, and, then, okay. and then Bancroft does a real power move. <laughs> <laughs> so then they go to Bancroft's house at the same time as uh, Uma Prescott shows up with his 3D printed clone from the last episode. Yep. And Isaac's like, Dad, I just want you to respect me. And Bancroft just acts like a real shit heel and doesn't. And then he very dramatically goes and gets a poker from the fireplace. Mm-hmm. And Miriam assumes he's going to beat his son. Everyone assumes. Everyone he's assumes he's going to beat his son. Because we... In fact, I, th- I thought, I thought no, that's the obvious one. He's going to beat Miriam. Oh. And, then, and then turn to the kid and say, your fault. That's pretty fucked up, Sean. That's what I remember. But that. instead, he walks past his family and bludgeons his clone to death. It's a real power move. <laughs> It was indeed a real power move. Christian Lee wet himself when I said that. <laughs> and then, bathed in his own blood, he thanks Vachmo for his with, assistance. W- with a very friendly handshake. <laughs> thanks for the update. Look forward to the next one. Walks off. It's a it's a real strange turn they've taken with Bancroft's character. Because in, in the book, he's just an ultra-rich, kind of boring sex deviant. Yeah. And he's not really that central to the plot. The, I mean, the Vatch doesn't like him very much. Well, but, no, he hates everything he stands for. Yeah, but he spends most of the book off, you know, pursuing the case to the semi-best of his abilities. Yeah. Only in checking in with him occasionally. But he's a lot more central in the book. I think we're meant to super hate him. I'm well, oh, yeah. sorry, he's a lot more central in the show. We're meant to super hate him for some reason. It's because it's because he's part of the 1%. And you should always hate the 1%ers. Well, Shut I've, up, dog! Well, obviously I do hate the 1%ers, but... Well, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's just an interesting change. I think it's because um, there isn't really a clear antagonist for a lot of the book. I mean, there are various people that are currently trying to murder Vachmo, but... Yeah. Um, you really, really stuck on the Vachmo. I fucking love it. I fucking love Vachmo. <laughs> I wish I could think of a... I wish I knew anything about jazz, and then I could name a Satchmo album. Shall I? No. It's going to be really loud. No, let, let's not put the people through that. Okay. So after performing a real power move <laughs> and, murder, <laughs> and murdering his clone... Um, so we're back at the fight drone and Carnage is like, ha ha, we've got you. And also here's Cadman in... And my little haircut too. Yeah. <laughs> His hair's amazing. Yeah. And Cadman in a, in a vatch sleeve. That's, and... Cadman is also Dimmy the twin. Yeah. In, in case you, in case you aren't watching the show and you're literally just listening to us talk about it. I think I've mostly been calling him Cadman in these episodes. I always call him Dimmy. That's because... That's how they refer to him half the time. Yeah, it's really confusing. It is. Anyway. Anyway, um, uh, if you, in case you've forgotten, uh, Vachmo is in Elias Riker's sleeve, so uh, Carnage builds. This is a uh, the humiliation, the final and complete humiliation of Elias Riker. Elias Riker, and oh, it's uh, two guys, one of whom has been surgically altered to have a rhino horn. No, they both have rhino horns. I, I think only one. Oh no, no, one of them only has a rhino horn. One, one guy's just kind of just kind of big. They're both obviously ogre troll things. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, newly super strong Ortega and Vachmo take them out. Mm-hmm. And then Dimmy drops into the arena and he's he's got a knife. He's got two knives. And they're covered with Reaper. And they're co- which, which is, I don't know, which is, uh, everyone uses this as a... It's not an effective Psycho- drug for killing people. No. Really. No. But it's not. Whatever. It's what they use. It's also slightly different to the way it is in the book, too. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, it looks like they're going to lose... And just when everything has gone to shit... They pull it out of the fire. In comes a mysterious ninja lady. Yep. And she's got a sword and she's chopping and blasting and firing what might be a sunjet, but I'm not sure, but I'm counting it. But Number of sunjets fired, maybe one. But you, you've skipped slightly ahead, oh. just ahead of my other good call of the evening. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 which was when um, so yeah oh yeah they do beat Cadman they beat Cadman um, and uh, Vachmo cuts out his stack and throws it to Ortega who crushes it in her new robot arm and I yelled out due process <laughs> 
this is the most masturbatory podcast we've oh ever my, done. Oh it's my. like you're just, hey guys, so before, when yeah. you couldn't have heard it, yeah. we made great jokes, and yeah. now we're going to tell them to you so yep. you can be in on them. Yep, I'm already hard. <laughs> Chris, I need you to leave the room. I need to be alone with the microphone. <laughs> Right, so cool ninja lady comes in with a cool looking gun. Guys, if you can't hear Chris, it's because the microphone's inside me. Uh, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> Why must you ruin everything? <laughs> cool ninja lady with a cool sword and a cool gun. Yep. Uh, which might be a sunjet. I'm calling it maybe a sunjet. Not as spectacular as I'd hoped. Yeah. But you know, you take what you can get. And because in the in the in the book, isn't it described as like one continuous beam? Yeah, I always imagine it as being like um, one of the beam shots from the Gundam animes. I always thought of it as like a big lightsaber you could just switch it off and on fast. Yeah, that also works. Yeah, yeah. Except a little bit more lasery, I guess. Yeah. Less less artfully constrained. It's like there is a fucking column of death between you yeah. and whatever you're aiming at. It, it. looks it, it, like it, it's a sun jet. It's literally what it says on the fucking tin. Yeah, I know. Look, I'll take I'll take little laser shots over nothing, but it's still not the sun jet of my dreams. Yeah. Which it could be, but it isn't. No. And then she pulls off her mask and says, "Hello, Tack," or "Hello, Tech. Hey, big brother." Oh, hey, big brother. That's right. And and this is as they've already established is what she calls him. And this is the introduction. Six fucking episodes in of Raylene Kawahara. Yep. Who is a super important figure in the books and in fact was mentioned on like the third page. Yep. Because it's really important that you know she exists. So later on her revelation will be a thing. And she's not Vachmo's sister and they're going to make it really dumb. But anyway, that's what happened. Sean, how many carbons do you rate this out of altered bronze? Farting truffles. Okay. I, I give it farting truffles. I honestly give it like a five. I mean, Look, it might have been that I was eating enchiladas the whole time and we were we were watching it together and yeah. ma- cracking jokes and pausing it whenever we wanted um, also that we bookended it with episodes of Better Off 10 holy which is a, shit which is a way better way to watch this show <laughs> like if you if you want to try and like like what? what's wrong? I'm just uh, looking at your uh, clear floor mat that's on top of yeah it's on top of a, a TARDIS rug that Lyle got me shout outs to Lyle mm-hmm the big man himself, Sleep Ozzy Giant. Check out his YouTube channel, which hasn't updated in about two years. I think so, yeah. It would be now about two years. who's slow? <laughs> Lyle? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seriously? You're calling Lyle out two years <laughs> after he stopped caring? Okay, so that was the end of the episode. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> that was 20 minutes, right? Right, let's get out of here. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, that's one of the shorter episodes we've done, really. Yeah, now you're dragging it out. Yeah. Um, so I'm Sean. I'm still Chris. Uh, oh shit, what's the name of the next fucking episode? I don't know. Look let's, it up. let's have a look. The name of the next episode. That's Master Chef. That's not Master Chef. That is. Do it. Alter Carbon, Joel Kinnaman. Next episode is called Nora Inu. That means Nora Dog. Nora Dog. Nora Dog indeed. Alright, cool. Bye. Bye.